Today, we're diving into color management, which is a term most of us are familiar with, but few of us have a confident grasp of. Why is this? First off, let's face it, color management just sounds boring and unnecessary. Those we're gonna find out today, nothing could be further from the truth. The other reason is that a lot of the information out there on this subject tends to be overly technical and too focused on details to answer the fundamental questions. What is it? Why do I need it? And how do I use it? To counter this, we're going to practically define color management and then look at why it's useful and how it's employed. If you're looking to get quick, consistent, and great looking results out of your grades, you need to understand this stuff. Okay, so what is color management? Well, to answer that, we need to cover a couple of basics. First off, any imaging system, whether it's a camera or a display, is only capable of capturing or reproducing a particular subset of all visible light and color. If you've ever discovered clipped highlights or shadows in your footage, you know what I'm talking about. Even though you were able to see something on the day, your camera was not. So this means that even in the simplest possible workflow, by the time I shoot something on camera A and view it on display X, my image has had to go through a minimum of two imaging systems which interpret light and color differently than my eyes do. This is a drag, but there's an upside. With the right math and the right tools, the unique capabilities of any imaging system can be measured, profiled, and accounted for in our workflow. This is what we mean when we refer to a color space. And color space is the foundation of color management. So back to the original question, what is color management? Color management is a systematic approach to preserving the perceptual accuracy of your image as it moves through one or more imaging systems. By accounting for the color space of every device in your imaging pipeline, we can ensure that the final viewing image best matches what we saw when we shot it on the day, and we can do so without subjective guesswork. Now that we know what color management is, we can ask the million dollar question. Who cares? Why should I bother to learn any of this? Let me offer a couple of reasons. First off, color management allows you to focus more on the image and less on the camera or the display. If you've ever pulled a piece of log material into a grading environment and hand graded it to get a good baseline of contrast and saturation on your monitor, you know that that process can sometimes go very fast and other times require a good bit of fussing. Now, I'm gonna break your heart when I tell you that no matter how much time you spend on it, it's not grading. It's subjective, improvised color management and it has more to do with the display and the camera than it does with the image. The point becomes even more evident when we start dealing with more than one type of camera. Here's another hard truth for you. Every minute you've ever spent eye matching one camera to another is a wasted minute that netted you an inferior result. Again, this isn't grading, it's just crappy color management. As if all this weren't enough, the issue becomes more pronounced still when we get into delivering for multiple screens. In a color managed workflow, my grade is my grade and I simply adjust its target output for whatever display I need a master for. Without color management, I'm once again left wasting my time on subjective guesswork that leaves me trying to eye match one deliverable to another. Okay, so we're all on board with the virtues of color management and the sins of ignoring it, right? So how does it work practically? There are a number of possible workflows, but I'm gonna walk you through two of the most common. The first is one that you're probably already somewhat familiar with, and it involves the use of a single LUT, specifically one provided by a camera manufacturer such as Sony or Aerie. These LUTs are essentially designed as a one-stop color management solution to take you from your camera color space to your display color space. But this simplicity has some downsides. First off, LUTs are not the ideal way to technically transform an image for reasons that I'm gonna go into in another video. Just as important, most manufacturer-provided LUTs are not strictly technical. They're what I call hybrid LUTs, meaning that in addition to a technical transform, they impart a creative look, which may or may not work for your material and over which you have no control. The other color management solution I wanna highlight is ACES, the Academy Color Encoding System. 
Now ACES has a lot more moving parts than a simple love-based color management workflow, but it's far more robust, supporting virtually all popular cameras and displays, and it can be deployed in a completely look agnostic way, meaning that you retain full creative control over your images. We're gonna do a full video on ACES in the future, but suffice it to say for today that it's the closest thing we have to an industry standard for good color management. I hope this helps clear up some of the basic concepts of color management for you. If you feel confused or overwhelmed, good. That's a sure sign that you're learning. Take another lap through this video and feel free to post any questions down below. Once you do get a good grip on these fundamentals, working out the details and starting to incorporate good color management into your workflows, it's gonna be easy and your results are gonna speak for themselves.